Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to a brand new week here on Inspiration for Today. I'm so excited you tuned in today. This is going to be a very important week. Starting tomorrow, we're going to do a series of shows that I think are the most important that we've ever done. To set the stage for those shows and those studies, really, that, uh, it's important that you know that the Bible is the Word of God. And I say that because whenever we say and study something amazing, and we rely on Scripture and the Scripture verses, then if I was a skeptic, the first thing I would say is, well, that's in the Bible. And I don't accept the Bible. I have my own book, whatever that might be. But the fact of the matter is, there is no other book like the Bible. And I need you, I need myself to be totally convinced that the Bible is the Word of God. And the burden of proof is on those who would say it is not. Let's start with this, a verse for the day and, and what the Bible says about itself. Comes from a verse you need to know. Have this in your quiver, so to speak. 2 Timothy 3.16 All scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize that what is wrong in our lives. It straightens us out and it teaches us to do what is right. But I want us to concentrate on especially that word inspired. In the Greek, the original language that Paul wrote to Timothy in, it says theonousis, theos, God, nousis, to breathe, God breathe. The Bible is inspired, it comes from God. Yes, he worked through human authors, but the Holy Spirit so patterned their lives that they said exactly what God wanted them to say. That There is no other book like that. Now, if that is the case, then we should suspect that there is no other book like that. That indeed, the Bible would have to be unique among books. And it is. And it is. There is no other explanation for what, the, what we hold in our hands with the Bible. There is no other explanation than that it is God-breathed. It could not happen by human authorship. Here's why. First of all, the Bible was written by more than 40 different authors over 50 generations and written on three continents by people of means, money, kings, shepherds, means, poverty, whatever. And yet, it all is one cons consistent story. The story of God and what his dealings with mankind and the story of how Jesus comes to redeem us. There is no conflict between these 40 authors. They're in total agreement. They don't contradict one another. It's amazing. There is no other book. That alone should convince us that the Bible is unique among all books. But if that weren't enough, you have such things as it's historically accurate. It never makes a mistake, historically or archaeologically uh, speaking. For me, it was prophecies. The prophecies that were often done years, hundreds of years before the event happened. And yet, guess what? The event always happens. Why? Because God sovereignly deems it so. He knows, God knows what he's talking about. He knows what's coming. And so all those prophecies, and for me, it, read Psalm 22 or Isaiah 53. Both, this in my case is what convinced me to become, that the Bible was true and a follower of Christ. They describe in detail how crucifixion, how the Messiah would be crucified. And yet, crucifixion was hundreds of years away from being even invented. 
How is that possible? Because God knew what was coming. So I, I just challenge anyone. Those are just two prophecies. We talked about prophecies about around Christmas too, about the birth of Christ. I challenge people that don't accept the Bible. How do you explain those predictions of what will happen? And they always happen. Wow. In addition to that, it's inerrant, it's accurate in every way. I am convinced, and I need you to be convinced, that the Bible is the Word of God. And if you have questions about that, email me. I would love to answer this. I wrote my master's thesis on this topic, basically. And I did it because I wanted to be totally convinced that the Bible is the Word of God, because it says amazing things. And starting tomorrow, we're going to look at a couple of weeks of amazing things. And so I encourage you to tune back in for this series of shows that starts tomorrow. But I needed you. We wanted to start with the, this basic truth. The Bible is the Word of God. And as we go out, we've been talking to your mind. Let this song talk to your heart. Everything in this song is true also. And we'll see you back here tomorrow. God bless. Have a great day. Your word will be the last word. Your promises will stand forevermore. Man's thoughts and all his plans to an end but your word will be the last word your word says I'm forgiven your covenant says you will always be with me Though some may scoff and write me off, your word will be the last word. Your word, it's my guiding light. Your promises guide me in the deepest darkest night though troubles come and go in my heart I'll always know that your word will be the last word man in all his wisdom and all his foolish pride puts his hope in only things he can see with his eyes claiming to be wise they became as fools instead the lord i'm banking all my faith on the truth of what you've said Your whole word will be the last word Your promises will stand forever and ever and ever more man's thoughts and all his plans they will come to an end but your word will be the last word yes your word will be the last word